I'm Paul Whitaker. I'm at Derbyshire County Cricket Club. It's the 9th of November 2017 and I'm talking to... Bob Taylor. Right, Bob, we've talked about various aspects of, of your career and your memories. I think what a lot of people would like to know is who was the fastest bowler that you've kept wicket to? Uh, well, there's, there's so many. Um, for Derbyshire, certainly, um, Harold Rhodes, when I first started playing. Um, Harold was quick. Well, you know, there's a lot of controversy about his action. I've always thought it was legitimate. You know, um, when people say about throwing, throwing the ball, um, fast bowling or any bowling is about being sideways on. And you can't physically throw a ball if you're sideways on. And Harold Rhodes had, had a perfect action. And what a lot of people don't realise is that Harold uh, had a double jointed elbow. <laughs> and when they say about the 15 degree extension and so on, Harold's elbow bent the other way, opposite. And it gave the impression, with being wristy as well, gave the impression he did throw, but um, he was very quick and certainly didn't throw, in my opinion. Um, a bit later on, a chap called Alan Ward. Alan Ward was. Um, very quick, yes, um, yeah. until he got injured. Uh, Devon Malcolm, these are all the Derbyshire bowlers. And then for England, Bob Willis, during my test match playing time, Bob Willis, Ian Botham, with the right conditions, could be quite quick. Um, Graham Dilley, when he was playing, uh, Graham was sharp. Um, John Snow, of course. Uh, although I didn't play with Snowy, uh, and that was before I got into the England team. Um, so there's quite a few. And playing against uh, Australia, the infamous Dennis Lilly and Jeff Thompson. I think Jeff Thompson's got to be the quickest, the quickest of the quick. Um, he always reminded me of a javelin thrower. Um, he used to sling the ball, but he was very quick. And then, of course, the West Indians, the, the times of Michael Holding and Andy Roberts, Joel Garner wasn't quite as quick, but a lot of bounce. Um, the West Indies have had a succession of fast bowlers, struggling a little bit now, but um, I think they've had their period of uh, the world's top fast bowlers. Did you, uh, did you ever play against that, those great West Indian? Fast bowlers of hold, holding and gone and Marshall when they were at their peak the, in the county. Uh, I played yeah. for them. Strangely enough, um, I mentioned about playing fifty-seven times for England. Mm. I never played a Test match against the West Indies. I played, which may may have been fortunate. Well, <laughs> not having to face I, I wanted it's it's um, uh, some it's a blot on my test career that uh, I didn't play a test match mm. against the West yes. Indies. It wasn't my fault. It was just that I wasn't selected. Played one day internationals, but never a test match. But um, playing against them, uh, Malcolm Marshall for Hampshire and Michael Holding when he played for Lancashire and then of course he came to Derbyshire. Um, they, they were great West Indian bowlers, as their records proved. Yes, yes, they certainly were. And um, we talked about fast bowlers. So, you, what about spin bowlers? Who were you think were the, the perhaps the best that you played with, or maybe the most difficult to keep wicket too, because they had so many well, variations. Well, from, from an England point, from an England point of view, um, because that's that's the pinnacle yes. uh, playing for your country, playing with and against the best cricketers there are on the planet. Um, from England's point of view, Derek Underwood has got to be the best spin bowler I've kept to and one of the best I've uh, played against when he played for Kent or what have you. But um, the, again, there's so many. But as, from a wicketkeeper's point of view, um, I get asked the same question. Uh, who, who are the, the hardest bowlers you've kept to? And without sounding blasey, it's, uh, as a wiki keeper, it's not actually the, the bowl, it's, it's the conditions. Um, when you attain test level, you've obviously got some ability. Um, 
the, the conditions are the hardest thing to you come at, uh, on the subcontinent, for example, India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh. I've never played in Bangladesh. But if you've kept wicket for five hours, 55 minutes of a day, and the ball's hardly past the bat because you're bowling against Sonal Gavaskar, Vishwanath, Ben Sarkar for India, top three top batters. You've got Jarvin, me and Dad, Imran Khan playing for Pakistan. And in their conditions on the subcontinent, their wickets, the ball hardly ever beats the bat. They're looking to score off every ball. The only time the wicketkeeper takes the ball is when it's being thrown in from the boundary. Now after five hours, 55 minutes of the heat, the humidity, you're tired, the last over of the day, if a spin bowler's bowling or a fast bowler's bowling, the batsman nicks it, he's just come in, a world-class batsman, Jarvin, me and Dad, he's just come in, he nicks it and you miss that chance or he, Derek Underwood's bowling or John Embry and he chases down the wicket and you miss that stumping, the last over of the day, he's going to be in there the following day and in guarantee he's going to get a hundred. That's what wiki keeping is all about, accepting that half a chance. And um, so without sounding blasey, that's, that's what wiki keeping is all about. Mm. But uh, the, the bowlers, been some terrific bowlers, uh, I would love to have kept a Shane Warne. I think Shane Warne was a marvellous bowler. And when we talk about wiki, other wicket keepers, I always put Ian Healy as one of the top wicket keepers of all time, uh, because he kept to uh, Sh uh, Shane Warne, and some of the catches and stumpings that he took uh, were marvellous. Uh, there was one particular one, I was working with Cornell Insurance, and I was in the um, p uh, pavilion at Old Trafford, and it's the, the wicket's the other way around now, but in those days uh, you were side on, and Mark Butcher was batting, Shane Warne was bowling, and um, the most difficult batsman to keep to, from a wicketkeeper's point of view, is left-handers, because there's, there's only a few left-handers in the team. So you're, you're practicing less against left-handers. But this ball, Shane Warne fizzed it down the leg side. M Mark Butcher went to play the walking shot through mid-wicket, missed it, and all in one movement, Ian Healy took the ball down the leg side wide and whipped the bales off. Brilliant stumping. Um, and that's what wicketkeeping is all about as well, taking those half chances. You have to concentrate all the time, which any other field has got a chance to, to switch off. That's right. A, a and little bit, and you've yeah. From the coaching, from the, from the coaching way. point of view, um, it's easy for me to say to a young wicketkeeper, imagine the ball is bowling to you. Imagine the ball's coming through to you. There's a batsman in front of you with a bat and a good player on a good wicket is going to hit the ball, hit the ball, hit the ball, score runs, the wicket becomes redundant. Now the only practical way I know of getting the wicket keeper to concentrate is every time the bowler bowls and the batsman plays the ball, you've got to physically go through the motions of taking the ball, taking the ball, imagine, that's, uh, imagining the ball's coming through to you. If the batsman plays, then at least you've taken it. Now, just to put it into um, ideal words, when the batsman goes down the, out of his crease to hit the ball to a spin bowler, and he misses the ball, two mistakes the wicketkeeper makes when he misses a stumping is one, he gets up too soon, so he's in a, his hands are here, and if the ball keeps low, he's no chance. And the second thing is, he, he makes the mistake of expecting the batsman to hit the ball. Now we've all done it when the batsman's gone out of his crease and he takes a huge yahoo to hit a six, he misses it, and you miss a stumping, 
um, those are the two things you've done wrong. Getting up too soon and imagining the batsman's going to hit the ball. If you do that, it's fatal. You've lost. What I'm saying about it, taking the ball, going through the motions of taking the ball, if you do that, get into that habit that when the batsman does go out of his crease, you're halfway there, aren't you? You're there ready to take the ball. Take the ball, but you've got to get into that habit. Yeah. Every time the bowler bowls the ball, take, go through the motions of taking the ball. So it, it just becomes part of your natural routine that you're, you're taking the ball yeah. every time. Now you've, you've talked there about batsmen going down the wicket and playing, and some of the Indian batsmen. You've seen many batsmen obviously close up Closer than or anybody else as, as a wicketkeeper. Who were the best batsmen that you think you've played with and against? Oh, there's so many. <laughs> um, yes. My, my number one hero was Garfield Sobers, Gary Sobers. Yes. I mean, he was class as an all round, he was a brilliant batsman. Um, he could bowl seam, he could bowl spinners, the wrong and so on, and great catcher of the ball. Um, Gary Sobers to me was the number one. Um, yes, yeah, so over 8,000 runs in that's test right, matches. That's right, and um, again a lovely man. Um, batsman, India, I've already mentioned Sunil Gavaskar, Vishwanath, Ben Sarke, uh, Pakistan, Jarvid, me and Dad, Imran Khan, um, Sadiq, uh, Australia. Ian Chappell, Greg Chappell, great players, West Indies, so many, Liv Richards, Gordon Greenwich, uh, marvellous batters, and I've played against them all, played with some of them, uh, one of the most interesting tours I've, I've ever been on was the rest of the world tour to Australia, when so the South African tour was cancelled because of the, was the height of the apartheid regime in South Africa. Yes, yeah. So um, the Australian board had to cancel the South African tour so they couldn't lose the revenue so they they bought a World Eleven together which was captained by uh, Gary Sobers, Clive Lloyd, Rowan Canai and then um, there's a multiracial team working and living together for the first time on a four-month tour and it had its problems at times but um, in the end we saw probably one of the most magnificent innings of all time and Gary Sobers on a king pair in Melbourne got 254 I think he, he got and even Sir Donald Bradman who was he was our employer he, he was uh, the chairman of the Australian Cricket Board and at the end of that tour which was unique a multiracial team living and working together at the end of the tour uh, we had a dinner and Sir Donald Bradman, the greatest, with a test average of 99.98, whatever it is, uh, said that Gary Sobers, was, uh, his innings of 254, was one of the best he'd ever seen. High praise from the greatest batsman. Yes, high praise indeed. So on, on that tour, it was, did you play state sides as well as the... Uh well, uh, what I didn't mention was uh, it was a similar situation. I was number two <laughs> <laughs> because the number one wicketkeeper is Farooq Engineer from India. Yes. Yeah. And uh, along with Bishan Beatty and um, Sonal Gavaskar, they were the three Indian players. Uh, but I had to play second fiddle. And it wasn't until the final, um, it was one all test matches, and uh, it was the final test match in Adelaide, and uh, the management. Australian manager, a chap called Bill Jacobs, they dropped Farouk, so I got a game in Adelaide and it was terrific, keeping to Inti Karbalem and Bisham Beatty, uh, it's a great experience and we won that test match, I think Sonal Gavaskar got 100. Um, we had the help of the Australian umpires. <laughs> Uh, it was funny, the, the, before the match started, we were in the bar at the hotel and the two Australian umpires, uh, I won't mention the names, um, they'd had one or two drinks and we were chatting away to the rest, the rest of the world team 
in the bar and uh, one of them said well if you hit Ian Chappell on the pad get up <laughs> if you hit Ian, uh, Keith Stackpole on the pad get up so of course <laughs> I'm keeping wicked and when they were hit on the pads um, we got up and whether they, they looked out or not um, the Australian umpire gave them out and obviously some personal things going on there Yes. Yeah. So, uh, but we won that test match, and it was a great experience. Yeah. So, um, so can we come come back to who do you, the Derbyshire players of the Derbyshire batsmen that you you played with? Uh, over think? the years, I think yes, we've already years, mentioned so. John Wright and Peter Kirsten, Eddie Barlow, Kim Barnett, um, played for England and. Uh, Kim, although he got an unorthodox stance at the wicket, and I think possibly that was his downfall. Uh, the press uh, was powerful, and I think the press wrote Kim off because of his stance at the wicket. Uh, otherwise, I think he, he would have played more. Do you, do you, do you think that it, the selectors were really influenced by what the press was saying about the way Kim was? Yeah, standing. well, uh, I don't know. I, I'm not sure really, but uh, on the face of it, um, and the commentators, uh, it wasn't Sky then, it was BBC, yes. and the uh, commentators uh, would say that what a strange stance Kim Barnett had. Um, and that, I'm sure that all these things, coming from supposedly expert ex players, um, but it's whether you, whether you get the end product, get runs. It doesn't matter how you how you stand. It's the end result that matters, and you've already mentioned Jeff Thompson, totally unorthodox bowling action. Yeah, but he got the ball but down. He got quick. an awful lot of wickets. Yeah, yes. he got the ball down the other end the quickest of anyone. So, uh, no, it's been very enjoyable over the years, and uh, yes, I in. in when, when you were playing, I, mean, I don't think the wickets were as well prepared as they are now, and you must have got a lot more green top wickets. Well, time, time distorts the mind, but I think in the early 60s when I started, I think we were still playing on uncovered wickets, um, mm -hmm. which makes a big difference. <laughs> yes, well, we could go on to uh, Jeffrey Boycott and another, uncovered wickets. Yeah, that's yes. another area of the game that has changed. The wickets are pretty flat now, and um, that's why the bowlers have to try and do more with the ball. Um, reverse swing, I'm, I'm not sure, sure how it works. <laughs> See the in swingers or out swingers. Well, but, uh, yes, yes. Obviously, you don't tamper with the ball. And I, I've, uh, well, since I retired, I worked for the cricket ball supplier, Dukes. And um, so there's a lot of talk, particularly again ex-players on Sky television talking about um, what the ball's doing, this, that and the other. Um, swing bowling is about the overhead conditions and whether the bowler polishes the ball. Yes. You're not supposed to tamper with the ball. No, well, the bowlers never seem to polish the ball these days. They seem to have somebody well, else that, that, that's, that's that does the Well, that's what we say polishing. about uh, reverse swing, don't they? They yes. don't have to polish the ball. It's just uh, rough on one side, but I don't know, you, you concentrate on one side of the ball. Yes, well, that's what I always used to, was always told when I was, was playing, but, uh, in, just in club cricket. Right, well, thank you very much, Bob. I think we're out of time yet again. I'm sure we could go on for much longer, but it's uh, been... Pleasure, absolute pleasure. Can, I, can I just say you. that, um, not just because I'm sitting here at the Derbyshire County Cricket Ground, um, I shall be eternally grateful. You know, as far as we know, we're only on the third month, and um, uh, to play professional sport, I think we're very privileged because at the end of the day, whether you're a footballer, cricketer, tennis player, golfer, um, it's, it's a short career, comparative. And um, to get paid for for doing a hobby, I think we're very privileged. And Derbyshire gave me the chance to play professional cricket for th twenty odd years, and uh, I shall be ever indebted to them. Well, I think on behalf of a lot of supporters, thank you very much for playing for Derbyshire.